it's my duty to serve Nigeria with all my heart, and that's what I'm doing. President Buhari returns from Paris, Confab, reassures Nigerians in France of government's commitment to sustaining democratic ideals. Revenues are down, expenditures are up, and that is high. African and EU leaders agreed to a $100 billion IMF post-COVID recovery funding for developing countries. Nigeria Governor's Forum wades into Kaduna labor dispute, calls for amiable resolution as reconciliation meeting in Abuja calls for further truths. Governor Ayade of Cross River crosses over to the ruling APC, cites need for alignment to the center as reason. Good evening. This is NTA Network News. I am Jomo Yusuf. We are live in Abuja and Michael Olale joins me from Lagos. President Mohamedou Buhari is back in Abuja after a four-day official visit to France. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports that the president was received on arrival at the Inamdi Azikwe International Airport by his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Acting Inspector General of Police, Usman Alkali Baba, Director General, Department of State Services, Yusuf Magaji Bichi, and other senior government officials. While in France, President Buhari joined dozens of African and European European leaders at the African-France summit aimed at supporting African countries recover from the negative economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The support will come from the special drawing rights of the IMF, which has a reserve of over $600 billion. Foreign Affairs Minister Jofi Onyema described the summit as significant for Nigeria. not just a talk shop and where Nigeria can stand to uh, benefit is of course in the drawing rights of the IMF to be able to access greater uh, financing um, without increasing the indebtedness as you know we have a um, significant level of, uh, of debt and uh, so any facility that will make it more um, uh, uh, easier for us uh, to access financing for our development without you know um, really uh, increasing our, uh, our debt profile is something that uh, would be a game changer actually for Nigeria. What we need probably more than anything else now uh, are investments, foreign investments and access to capital, to financial capital. And so this meeting uh, is really for that. And also vaccination, manufacturing vaccines uh, in uh, Africa for COVID. President Mahmoud Buhari is reassuring Nigerians that his administration's commitment to free and fair elections will be followed through in future elections. Addressing Nigerian professionals in France, the president said the bedrock of democracy remains the sustenance of a multi-party structure that can be trusted by the citizens. State House correspondent Adam Sambu tells us more. Contributing 6.1% of the nation's annual GDP through remittances as well as their talents, skills and global exposure to national development, Nigerians in the diaspora are indeed a constant source of pride to the country. No wonder, therefore, interacting with them is an indispensable part of President Buhari's activities while on official visit abroad. We had Nigerians in the diaspora who got together to actually donate PPEs back home. They contributed millions of dollars and were able to give out PPEs to every state of the federation. This kind of interaction, you know, is an opportunity for Nigerians here to engage with the president directly. President Muhammad Buhari, who addressed a wide range of issues, takes pride in the fact that results from elections since he assumed office had been a mixed bag with the people's choice always playing out. He promised to keep the template that had brought more credibility to the electoral process. As a sitting government, our party, the All Progressive Congress, you know, lost a number of seats. And at our stage of development is unheard of. Normally those who are in power by hook or by crook, they will win elections. <laughs> but we believe in free and fair elections. We show Nigerians that we respect them. 
by allowing them to make their personal choice. The president promised to remain steadfast in service to the nation and humanity, saying his administration will not relent until the country is fully secured and the people remain safe. We have to secure the country to manage it properly. It's my duty to serve Nigerians and Nigeria with all my heart, and that's what I'm doing. Describing agriculture as the future of Nigeria, President Buhari, however, maintained that the greatest resources are the people of the country, and therefore educating them is a priority. Some of the participants spoke to NTA News on their major takeaways from the interactive engagement. The president has uh, given us some words of assurance that he is on top of the game in this matter of insecurity. Our prayers are accompanying his government in all their efforts. He has assured us that uh, everything is in progress and we believe him. He will fix it. He's the father of all. Nigeria's ambassador to France, Kayode Ibrahim Lamu, had assured the president that the Nigerian community in France represent the best values of Nigeria. From Paris, France, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, an agreement to push wealthier nations to reallocate $100 billion in international monetary fund IMF reserves to African states have been reached by African and European leaders. This was one of the outcomes of the France-African summit in Paris. Adebola Brooks and Sunday reports. African leaders and heads of multilateral lenders advocating ways of financing African economies have issued a communique of a substantial financial package needed so that African countries are not left behind in economic recovery from the negative impact of coronavirus pandemic. Top on the key talks is what they call special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund reserves and reallocating them from richer nations to the African continent. President Emmanuel Macron, who is the convener of the summit, said France and several European countries took the step at a time when the continent is projected to face a near $300 billion deficit by the end of 2023. Our work in the coming weeks will be to convince others to make the same effort as France, starting, of course, with the United States of America. The project. President Marcus Sol of Senegal, who welcomed the plans, described it as a change of paradigm as Africa is now building what it needs for all, which gives a ray of hope. While the International Monetary Fund's chief, Kristalina Georgieva, said Africa's economic outputs will increase by only 3.2% in 2021 compared with 6% in the rest of the world. Revenues are down, expenditures are up, and that is high. Georgieva said IMF will come up with a new allocation proposal by August. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Now, the Federal Executive Council has given its support to digital switchover in Nigeria. Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed, who gave an update on digital switchover in the country at the National Economic Council virtual meeting held today, says more than 200 retailers have been registered across the country and the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority receives a part on the back for its performance in 2019-2020 trades. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. The launch states, as reported to the Council by Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, are Lagos, Kano, and Rivers, and that more Nigerians will benefit from free television services with the increase in channels and also be an avenue for wealth creation as a result of increase in channel content. Also, open up more opportunities for the content creators attracting additional investment into the industry. It, is, it makes it easier for new entrants in the media industries. An exhaustive presentation of 2019 and 2020 reports on the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Wealth Fund was made by the Managing Director of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, Uche Oji. Reported earnings of 36 billion naira in 2019 and 160 billion naira in 2020. 
The difference between 2019 and 2020 was mainly from international investments made by the NSIA, which ended significant returns, as well as devaluation impacts, which contributed about 51 billion naira to NSIA because of the positions held by the NSIA in US dollars that get revalued when the naira devalues. Council generally commended you know, um, the performance and, and, and the, the, the sterling contribution of NSIA to the growth, you know, of, of our sovereign wealth um, and balance sheets. And it was very... And the states again requested a shift of date in the repayment of loan facilities. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefele and Finance Minister Zainab Ahmed expressed consequence of late repayment of these loans. The, 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 the Vice President will be uh, holding a meeting very, very soon uh, that we include the, uh, the representative of the governors, uh, the finance minister, and the central bank governor to find a way uh, to resolve uh, uh, the issue. The virtual meeting was chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo in the State House. Jude Onifade, NT News. Kaduna State Governor Nasir Ahmed Orufai has briefed the Nigerian Governors Forum on the dispute between the state and organized labor, as well as the rationale for some of his actions. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this was at the 30th teleconference of the forum and 7th in the year 2021. As part of the resolutions reached after Governor Erufai's briefing to the forum, NGF agreed to stand with the embattled governor owing to his transformative leadership in the state and promised to key into his reforms. The forum appealed to the organized labor to sheet their swords and return to negotiation table to resolve the current impasse. The Governor's Forum also called for the immediate removal of petroleum subsidy to save the country of 70 to 210 billion naira losses from sales of premium motor spirit at 162 naira per litre. The Nigerian Governor's Forum also pledged to strengthen partnership with Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 for successful vaccination of more than 70% of Nigerians by the year 2022. Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kayo Defiemi, briefed his colleagues on the update of the consolidated exercise of the three tiers of government into a national budget portal. On the ongoing Jusun and Pasa nationwide strike, governors agreed to implement Executive Order 10 as soon as the legal encumbrances are resolved. NGF also received presentation from the World Bank on the progress of Tashi State on the implementation of 750 million U.S. dollars under the State Financial Transparency, Accountability and Sustainability Program. Minister of Agriculture Mohamed Sabonanono briefed the governors on the Agri-Food and Jobs Plan database targeted to register 10 million farmers and also to empower additional 2.4 million smallholders farmers across the country. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. The principle of redundancy will be applied in resolving trade union dispute between Kaduna State Government and organized labor. This was the resolution reached at the conciliatory meeting presided by the Minister for Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Igigi. Ekene Ndulue reports that after a five-hour closed-door deliberation, newsmen were busting with anticipation to hear the outcome. Dr. Chris Igege, who read the resolution, noted that all issues presented fell within the ambits of redundancy, hence the principles as contained in Section 20 of the Labor Act shall apply. A 10-man bipartite committee comprising of members from both parties is to work on the recommendations and submit a work plan to the minister on or before Tuesday next week. It was further agreed that no person shall be victimized on account of participation in the three-day industrial action in Kaduna State. As the parties sign the agreement, it is hoped that normalcy will return to the state. In the meantime, train services on the Kaduna Abuja rail line have been restored with travelers applauding federal government's timely intervention in the suspended Kaduna trade dispute. Haruna Mohammed reports on this and the restoration of order services following the suspension of the NOC strike. The resumption of train services on the Kaduna Abuja rail line and a sigh of relief for travelers. We are happy that the train is back. As of last week, 
Many people were, were stranded, somehow stopped, you know. So actually, we, we are excited. Public sector establishments, including essential services such as electricity, health, and education, have been restored in Kaduna after three days' strike by the Nigerian Labor Congress, protesting the sack of workers. The reports from Zaria, Kafoncha, Birnongwari, and other parts of the state indicate that work has also resumed in the areas. The strike is now history, but the experiences of the Kaduna residents will linger on for some time. During that blackout, it has caused a lot of things, which uh, some companies were shut down. Expectations are high that with the intervention of the federal government, the trade disputes will be amicably resolved. In Kaduna, Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. You are watching the news on NTA. We'll take a break. When we return, more reports. <laughs> You're welcome back. Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State has jumped ship, formerly leaving the People's Democratic Party PDP for the All Progressives Congress APC. The governor made the declaration in the presence of six APC state governors and the Minister of State Petroleum Timmy Prey Silva in Calabar, Cross River State Capital, after a meeting with major political stakeholders in the state. Paul Eber reports. Governor Ben Ayade made the declaration in the midst of Yube, Plateau, Ekiti, Jigawa, Imu, and Kebi state governors. Minister of States for Petroleum, National and All Cross River State Assembly members, Cross River State's Executive Council members, local government council chairmen, all political office holders, and other major political players in the state. Having seen and known the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, his commitment to this country, his nationalistic disposition, and all the efforts he has put to bring Nigeria to where we are today, it is obvious that at this point, we need to join hands with him to build a Nigeria that we will be proud of. On behalf of the ABC family, to welcome His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Cross River State, Professor Ben Ayade, formally into APC. As from today, he is the leader of the party, APC, in Cross River State. You cannot resolve so many, many issues if you are not at the center. Right move in the right direction. This union is a good one, well thought out. We will support our governor, hopefully in 2023 we will deliver Cross River State to APC. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party has reacted to the news of the campaign of Cross River State Governor Professor Ben Ayade. The party spokesman Kola Olagwadiya in a statement calls on all critical stakeholders and teaming members of the PDP in Cross River State to immediately pull together and ensure that every structure of the party in the state remains intact. Inundated by complaints from electricity consumers, the House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the transfer of debts by distribution companies of Nigeria from previous to new users. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The resolution was in response to a motion from Representative Abiola Olatunji. The House frowned at the transfer of debts incurred by old electricity customers to new users, a practice the lawmakers describe as unfair. The House Committee on Power was mandated to engage these schools and relevant regulatory agencies on the matter. The lawmakers also urged the federal government to direct the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission to suspend the decision to further increase electricity tariff effective June 2021, as moved by Representative Anikan Umana. Led working with distribution companies as the discos has increased electricity tariff five times since 2015 and the letters being on January 1st, 2021. Turning attention to the ongoing strike by Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, the House called on the federal government to resolve it, as raised by Representative Zajo Sugu. The closure of courts portends grave danger to the polity and is capable of exacerbating the current security situation in the country. Other considerations as plenary Thursday include second reading of a bill to amend Matrimonial Cause Act from Representative Ubin Nachidoka in a bill seeking to reenact the Patents and Designs Act to protect inventions as moved by Representative Taiwu Uluga. The essence of this bill is to celebrate the intellectual property's rights 
are exclusive rights that are conferred by law to an individual enterprise, cooperation, and legal entity. Meanwhile, the House has shown support for the establishment of African Regional Parliamentary Assembly of the Sahel and Sahara States on Great Green Wall, as tabled by Representative Johnson Oguma. Plenary has been adjourned for one week as the House holds a five-day summit on national security, commencing Monday next week from the National Assembly. Lami Ali, NTA News. Governor Ben. Governor Dave Omahi of Ebony State says he strongly believes that the southeastern part of the country has no plan to break away from Nigeria and advised sponsors of unrest in the region to embrace peace and dialogue with the government rather than take arms. The Ebony State governor stated this during the weekly briefing series at the presidential villa in Abuja. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. It's another session of interaction between the executive and the State House Press Corps being coordinated by the presidential communications team. This time, it is the turn of Governor Dave Umahi of Ebony State and Chairman Southeast Governors Forum. The security situation in Southeast. The governor who highlights the achievements of this administration in the areas of agriculture, health, education, youth and women empowerment and development of infrastructure explains that while his government is committed to doing more without peace there cannot be development and calls on those that are taking up arms against the government to let down their arms and embrace dialogue i have offered along with southeast governors to our youth present your demands in print and hand over to us some of them have marriage. There's no region in this country today that, you know, do not have one thing or the other against the federal government, you know, against, you know, one region or the other. But we can all sit down to discuss. And that's what you have demanded from our youth, whether band on band. So far you're from Southeast, let us see your demands. Let us see your grievances. Give to us. Give us six months to engage the federal government to address in all this. Because I believe in dialogue, and I believe that we can sit down as a people to discuss and uh, find what our differences. And uh, we can know our differences, and also we can together discuss how we can strengthen you know, our cooperation as a people. The governor also emphasizes the need for all Nigerians to be patriotic. Whatever that will happen in the constitutional amendment, we make these political offices very, very unattractive. You know, can we make the, the National Assembly to be part-time? You know, can those who have made mark in their in companies, in their life endeavors, be encouraged to come up as leaders of this country? The briefings highlight issues in the polity and efforts of the government towards tackling them. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NJ News. In view of the emerging security threats in the country, the Defence Headquarters has further upscaled its ongoing operations across the country. The Acting Director of Defence Media Operations, Brigadier General Benyard Onyeko, stated this at a news conference to highlight armed forces operations between 1st and 20th May 2021. He said land troops have intensified aggressive patrol and artillery bombardment of criminal camps with the air component conducting offensive airstrikes. Intelligence surveillance with search and rescue missions on the front lines of the northeast while in the maritime domain, troops conducted anti-piracy and anti-smuggling operations to safeguard the nation's oil resources. In the maritime domain, our troops disrupted smuggling activities, immobilized illegal oil refining sites, arrested some perpetrators. This is the median briefing by the Defense Media Operations since the assumption of office by the current service chiefs. 
There have been unconfirmed official, unofficial reports claiming that Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Sheikau has been killed. The reports claim that Sheikau was killed in battle with terrorists of the Islamic State West Africa province, Iswap, in the Samvisa forest. Former Army spokesman Brigadier General Kuka Sheikau retired, first posted the news in his Facebook page Wednesday night, and Boko Haram confidant Ahmed Salkida, a journalist, posted on his personal Twitter handle claim that Shekau committed suicide. Nigerian military and security authorities told NTA News that the claim is being investigated. There is a growing call on the media to be wary of unpatriotic elements seeking to take advantage of its platform to pull down the country at its trying moment. The acting director general of National Broadcasting Commission, Professor Armstrong Idachaba, lent his voice to the call at an interface with top managers of media organizations in Abuja. Joseph Austin reports that the engagement is tailored towards better management of information for the development of the nation. Every nation experiences trying period with insecurity threatening stability, determined to deploy the media for positive engagement to douse the overheating of polity as well as nibbling on patriotic elements from exploring loopholes. It is in line with this that veterans in the broadcasting industry in Nigeria are cautioning themselves and exchanging ideas on right messages that will serve public interests at the same time take note of national security and sovereignty for development. There's need for mutual appreciation of each other's role. That is talking about we in the media and the others in the security. We know that we have an obligation to the viewers, but at the same time, we can do our best to calm things down by focusing a lot more on positives. Media operators, what we should be thinking of is the information that you give out that we kind of douse tension and bring solutions to national issues. Of course, you know there are people that are necessarily or traditionally or by character are inclined to preaching hatred and divisiveness, those who promote violence. Uh, why would you ordinarily invite those kind of people to come and express venom? Uh, that is counterproductive. Freedom of information to these media managers is not freedom to destroy or pull down the nation. In Abuja, Joseph Otsen, NTA News. Governor Bala Muhammad of Bauchi State has described effective communication and public relations as vital tools for achieving a successful and progressive society. He stated this while declaring open the 2021 annual general meeting of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations held in Bauchi. Bulak Afsa reports. Since the inception of our administration in May 2019, we have shown total commitment to infrastructural development Bauchi State, for the first time in the Northeast, hosted the annual general meeting of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations with members of the Institute across the country in attendance. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who addressed the meeting virtually said, it is the right time for members of the Institute to play a vital role in fight against fake news and hate speech for national cohesion. Plateau State Commissioner of Information, Dan Manja, conveyed a message of Governor Simon Bakula Long to the meeting. The President of Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, Mukhtar Zubairi Sraju, said the aim of the Institute is to develop the art and science of public relations practice towards promoting peaceful coexistence and good governance for national development. He called on politicians in the country to always consider the public interest and avoid any acts capable of overheating the polity in the interest of peace and unity of the nation. The the public relations family believes in Nigeria and its continued corporate existence. We believe we are much better off together than staying in bits and pieces. But this must be based on trust and confidence of all of us in one another. Meanwhile, over 20 members of the NIPR were decorated as new fellows of the Institute. In the meantime, 
registered members have elected officials to lead the institute for the next two years in Bauchi. Bulak Afsa, NCA News. Traditional rulers in Oshun and Anambra states have offered to repair two INEC offices damaged during the NSAS protest. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu stated this general meeting with resident electoral commissioners in Abuja. Mayor Ogidi reports on this and the current state of the continuous voter registration exercise. The NSAS protest has ended, but damaged structures still bleeding. INEC offices were also major victims of the protest by the youths. But the elders say, INEC, sorry, we will repair the structures. And this excites INEC. Following the vandalization of our offices in Oshun State during the NSAS protest in October last year, the Ikirun community in a fellow local government area offered to repair our local government office destroyed during the NSAS protests. In the same vein, in Inewi North, in Anambra State, the community has also offered to repair our local government office destroyed during the NSAS protests. The commission does not take such partnership for granted. Still recovering from the NSAS saga, attacks from faceless individuals continue on INEC offices taking a lot out from INEC, but not the smile from the INEC boss, and this will not affect plans of the commission. I am glad to report that the commission has virtually completed necessary preparations for the resumption of the continuous voter registration. In the next few days, the commission will meet to finalize the compilation and coding of polling units and thereafter make the information public. Our focus on a number of November 6 governorship election remain unshaken. INEC promised. Mie Ogede, NTNs. Borno State Governor Professor Baba Gana Umara Zulum has said that the third year of his administration will focus on effective service delivery, having put in place new physical structures such as schools and hospitals. The governor stated this at the government house may degree while fielding questions from journalists shortly on arrival from Saudi Arabia after three weeks on Lesser Hajj. Mohammed Goni reports. Professor Bagana Umara, who was accorded a rousing welcome by the citizens on his return, highlighted some of the achievements recorded last year, especially in the areas of security, water supply, housing, reconstruction and resettlement, among others, assuring the citizens to expect effective service delivery in all areas, including health and education, through recruitment of manpower. We want to consolidate on the gains that we have achieved so far by ensuring establishment of effective service delivery. Which is very critical. Governor Zulum noted that security is the topmost priority of his administration and the stress commitment to ensuring that every part of the state is protected from terror attack, adding that government will not be deterred from its resettlement drive and the closure of some IDPs camp within MMC and Jere by the end of May, adding that the military has already established its presence there. On the power outage being experienced in the state, the governor who assured residents that government is working towards a sustainable power supply and taking necessary measures to ensure that the facilities are not vandalized once repaired and recall the steps taken in partnership with NNPC to establish a durable gas power plant in Borno as alternative source. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. We now go over to Lagos Network Center for more reports on network news and Michael is our guide. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jumai. The ever-busy Oshodi bus stop in Lagos was thrown into confusion in the early hours of Thursday. Intervention by the Nigerian police and other related authorities has brought calm to the area. The Lagos State Commission of Police is also assuring the Goshens that the area is safe and normalcy will be sustained. Imoli Ayotoki Deogufowura brings us an update. Relatively calm ambience. Unlike the chaos that took over the vicinity earlier in the day, 
The Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Akim Odumusu, is assuring Lagosians to go about their normal businesses as efforts have been put in place to sustain peace and order in the area. But for now, anybody that has business has reason to pass through to the phone for any transaction or as a route either to or for another part of Lagos should be free to do that because OCHOD is now calm. Police is everywhere. According to eyewitnesses' account, the earlier fracas at the ever busy Oshodi bus stop was as a result of the murder of a Nigerian Air Force personnel by hoodlums, popularly referred to as area boys, and the alleged reactions by the Air Force and the military. You just see them this morning went down from their Ilos bus, there are like eight cars. When they walk, come down, they just bring knife, cutlass. The next thing they put on their face masks, started spoiling all our buses around here. So they chase many people, they injure many people, they even took many, some people away, some charmers at other beach. Although many who were affected by the vandalism and violence that occurred are still counting their losses, normalcy has returned to the area and the police commissioner has warned the Lagosians to stay law-abiding and shun actions that could escalate the situation. In Lagos, Imoli Ayotokedi Ogunfowora, NTA News. Lagos State Government has unveiled small capacity buses to replace the operations of motorcycles and tricycles, which have been outlawed in some parts of the metropolis by the 2018 amended state traffic law. Musa Toliat reports that Governor Babajide Sanwolu introduced the bus scheme captured under the bus reforms initiative in Lagos. Governor Babajide Sanwolu, who unveiled the scheme, said the first and last mile bus initiative is targeted at curbing avoidable road crashes synonymous with operations of commercial motorcycles popularly known as Okada. He, however, charged the transport unions who have been incorporated into the bus scheme to caution and control motorcycle and tricycle operators under their purview with a view to ensuring the success of the first and last mile bus scheme. Early last year, the state government announced what was in our law by the restriction of commercial motorcycles called Okada in six local governments and nine local council areas, and of course on our major roads. What we are doing, it's about improving and guaranteeing the security of lives and property of our citizens. Meanwhile, Security and law enforcement agencies have been repositioned to curb any form of resistance to smooth running of the minibus scheme. Anything that's not going to make the vehicle to be on the road, that's not going to give security bind to the drivers and the passengers lines of our own responsibility. So when those issues are, we're already discussing, we already have our plans. Definitely reactions are expected, but we are already prepared in conjunction with other agencies to meet the reaction at his own help. 300 out of the expected 2,000 small capacity buses meant for the first phase of the scheme were unveiled. Officials of the regulatory agency, Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, hinted that the bus scheme is largely private sector driven and the operations of the scheme will cut across eight zones across the metropolis. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports after this break. Please stay tuned. You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News. And also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. You're welcome back. 
Despite challenges raised by the pandemic, the Bank of Industry says it recorded a growth of 79.1% in the year ended, thereby declaring its financial standing as strong and resilient while assuring investors of adequate returns on investment. This was made known at the 61st Annual General Meeting of the Bank of Industry in Abuja. Benny Adams reports. Against all odds, the Nigerian banking industry witnessed positive growth with total credit increased to 2.9 trillion naira between January and December 2020, as the industry provided support to businesses. The picture became clearer as the Bank of Industry presented its financial statements for the year ended. The bank's total assets grew from 1.04 trillion naira in 2019 to 1.86 trillion naira in 2020, with total equity increasing from 293.08 billion naira to 336.48 billion naira, just as the bank recorded marginal growth of 1.3% in loans and advances. Same cannot be said of profit before tax, which fell by 9.6% from 39.34 billion naira to 35.54 billion naira. We have doubled our dividend payment this year. This year, the bank said it is working on broadening strategies focused on business recovery and opportunities in healthcare and ICT. Pharmaceuticals, logistics, food industry, and ICT. These are areas of advantage, and we are going to also capitalize on the AFCTA. As I'm speaking to you now, we are finalizing arrangements to go to the Eurobond market to raise additional money. Why? To further give the bank more ammunition to be able to help the industrial sector in 2021. The governing board of the bank approved dividend of 4.6 billion naira to be shared and also approved the appointment of Adewale al Bakari into the governing board. Benny Adams, NTA News. The Industrial Training Fund, ITF, is partnering with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment to reduce unemployment by promoting sustainable solutions through skill acquisition and development. To this end, the ITF has graduated another batch of trainees under the National Industrial Skill Development Program in Abuja. Musa Abubakar reports. The six weeks of intensive training in different skills acquisition has come to an end for the 2020 National Industrial Skills Development Program trainees. Akuna Roof is one of the many trainees. Like many graduates, she had no skills before she enrolled for the program. Actually, you know, uh, universities, they teach us more of tutorial, um, tutorial. I never had the chance to really practice it practically until I got this opportunity. The training in fashion design, cosmetology, and ICT, amongst other areas, is to equip youths with technical skills for job and wealth creation. This graduation is a continuation of our drive to ensure that as many as possible are equipped with the technical skills for them to earn a living. To further complement this drive, the federal government recently entered into partnership with Microsoft Corporation, an American multinational technology company, to accelerate the nation's efforts in deepening the digital economy. With the starter parks presented to the trainees here, Akuna Roof and her fellow trainees said they will soon realize their dreams of becoming business owners and hopefully employers of labor. In Abuja, I am Musa Ubakar, NTA News. Communities in River State are set to witness exponential growth as the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited launches the first phase of its global memorandum of understanding. This initiative is expected to give communities in River State leverage over developmental projects and improve the social economic lives of the citizenry. In Kiru Onyejesi, completes the report. The communities covered by the first phase of the Global Memorandum of Understanding are Rumuji, Ubeta, and Obum Nabali. The Global Memorandum of Understanding will put the areas in the driving seat of their development with the active support of the Nigerian liquefied natural gas and LNG. The IOCs, I would say, are not having the best of relationship with the communities, but LNG is uh, better. LNG, I must say, they are better, but I like I advise them they, are, they can do better. They can, you know, improve on their relationship with the community. This is the first time 
We've entered a GMOU with Nigerian MLNG. And um, we see it as something that will be beneficial to us. The Commissioner for Chief Tenancy and Community Affairs and the General Manager of External Relations and Sustainable Development say the initiative will continue to help change the narrative on sustainable growth in the Niger Delta region and in Nigeria as a whole. We commend the community because you have peacefully conducted yourselves and that is how come we're having this kind of peaceful ceremony today. Well, thank you so much. If things go on like this, there will be less crime for There will be more development in our community. GMO you signed today is for five years and we look forward to a transformation in these three communities driven by the communities themselves for the communities but with Nigeria LNG supporting with building of capacity to ensure that these things happen. High point of the event was the inauguration of the board of trustees from the three clusters comprising chiefs, land-owning families among others. In Port Harcourt, in Kiru Onye Jesse. NTA News. A rural community food system dialogue held in Kogi State has reiterated the imperatives for support and infrastructural provision in Nigeria's food producing communities as a measure to eradicate poverty and hunger. Francis Idojo reports that the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, and Value Chain Development Program met with other agencies and partners to brainstorm with local farmers on the way forward. This is the United Nations Rural Community Stakeholders Food Systems Dialogue. This dialogue will help to build the world's food security decade action plan of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Adogo in a Jokuta local government area of Kogi State, being an agrarian community, has been made a pilot to other selected local government areas. The problem we are facing in the farm is that, you see, chemical is being invented to help the farmer, but now it's no more helping the farmer because they are thick ones. We need loan to use to farm. The challenge we are facing here is about the herdsmen that are destroying our crops. The International Food for Agricultural Development, IFAD, is expected to come in while data collected at the cost of the dialogue will be the basis for the United Nations World System policy to be implemented by the Sustainable Development Goals. Some crops are going into extinction. Locust beans is going into extinction. These are cash crops. When we're talking about food systems, we're talking about the place, the people, the activities that are involved in the production of food. From the foregoing, it is the desire of farmers to see that the challenges confronting agricultural value chain be minimized in order to complement the 2030 SDGs plan for access and availability of food for all. From Adogo in Ajokuta local government area, Francis Sudojo, NTA News. Over now to our sports decks for sports update with IODG Makinde. Thanks, Jume. We'll begin with football where the Nigeria Football Federation says it will do all in its power to prepare the Super Eagles for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Hence, the quality friendly ties against Cameroon on June 4 in Austria and Mexico on July 3rd in Los Angeles, United States. The reason why we're engaging them because both two countries, Mexico and Cameroon, are powerhouses as far as football is concerned. And we do not want to just play any nation for the sake of playing. We want to play countries that we know will give us value for our money. After returning from the World Para Athletics Grand Prix in Notwil, Switzerland, where they won 11 gold and five silver medals, the Para Athletics Federation of Nigeria says it is poised for a showdown at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics while awaiting more Paralympic slots in June. Our world-class athletes will move into camp immediately with the coaches so that they will be trained and drilled so that in the coming Olympic in Japan, we will definitely come back with very high quality medals. 
Quickly now, Team Kogi has won the maiden edition of the North Central Male Volleyball Classics, beating Team Plateau State three sets to one in the final 21-27, 25-21, 25-21 and 25-20. However, in the women's event, Team Plateau State beats Team Kogi in three straight sets to emerge winners. And that's your sports. It's back to Jumei. Thank you, Ayo Deji. And as we told you earlier, the 2021 annual general meeting of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations has been in Bauchi. In the, in the election of new officers to run the affairs of the organization, Mukhtar Zuberu Siraju returned as president of NIPR. Well, that's network news tonight. Don't forget to join hands with NTA and be a star as we wage the war against rape and rapists. Good night. I am Jumbo Yosef.